Coming.
serious firepower to pierce their armor, boss. Call in support if you need it. Kidding around. Snake?
Mission complete, boss. Golfis is no longer in Africa. The nuclear test was a success. Now they turned the knives on me. Satellites didn't read any test. Neither did seismometers. The detonation test took place five years ago in the southern Indian Ocean. The final test was the opposite. To prevent detonation. You mean? Skullface plans to sell nuclear weapons that he retains control of. It's not like hawking small arms to militias. Indeed. He plans to avoid detection by exporting minerals containing tiny amounts of uranium in the form of metallic archaea. Once on site, the metallic archaea enrich the uranium it, loaded onto all-terrain bipedal machines. They ensure any country, armed group, even the smallest terrorist cell, can become a nuclear power. Bipedal. So that's why they needed Huey. A new business to replace the arms business. And Skullface owns the market. The very atmosphere of nukes, anywhere and everywhere, Deterrence on all sides. So that's why he ran a non-detonation test. Yes. Another metallic archaea instantly overrides the criticality generator. It fails safe only he controls. Any such weapon can be deactivated whenever he chooses, regardless of who owns it or their intent to use it. Snooks. Controlled by a man, not a country. If they proliferate, conventional nukes lose all value. Political, military, and economic. The two superpowers become powerless. R&D and medical teams have come up with a proposal for a new suit that applies Code Talker's research, the Parasite Suit. Apparently, it can recreate some of the Skull's unusual abilities. But in order to use those abilities, it needs Parasites. If you want to wear this suit, you're going to need to get a hold of Parasites by extracting Skulls. to stop the epidemic at Mother Base. About the pathogen spreading through Mother Base, what's your opinion? Textbook symptoms of vocal cord parasite infestation. And 
judging from this casualty list, it is the Kikongo strain. Meaning, a breed of parasite that triggers symptoms upon detecting pronunciation specific to Kikongo. So how do we keep them from becoming symptomatic? Use this. A type of Volbachia. Introduced to a sample of the parasite. The parasitic bacteria that colonizes the parasites. Turning male to female. And preventing copulation. You must cultivate more. Thanks to Code Talker, we've managed to put a stop to any new vocal cord parasite infections. We couldn't save those already symptomatic, but everyone who survived has been released from the quarantine platform. Skullface will pay for this. Again, with a truth serum? What are those legs made of? Titanium? All the way to the femur. <laughs> Metallic Archaea. Sohilanthropus. Where is it? What? We have to know before his plan is complete. Sir Helanthropus is the final piece. W w what are you talking about? If the Soviets break out a mobile, controllable nuclear weapon... East-West relations will be right back at the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Cold War returns to life. As countries without nuclear arsenals line up for what Skullface is selling. Nuclear weapons proliferate overnight. And on the brink of annihilation, the world maintains its balance. But we know this is all just a shield, a ruse. The cleansing parasites are what matter most. A WMD to eclipse even nukes, and the only one that can still be used. Skullface is the world's greatest threat, and Zero's. The pieces are in place. All that remains is to unveil Sohilanthropus in Afghanistan. They can't activate it without me. Thank you. 
Okay, B Zero. The Philanthropist is beyond the Soviet base camp in a lab built by the Soviet philosophers. That's what you're looking for. But I have no idea how he's controlling it. It wasn't designed to accommodate a human pilot. Word from Afghanistan. Everyone at the Soviet base camp's dead. No sign of fighting. Parasites. Skullface's men then headed north. The target is OKB Zero. That's where he'll activate Sahalanthropus. Unless we stop him, he'll go down in history a conquering victor. We can't let that happen. Wipe him out. Don't leave any trace of his existence. I'm gonna need backup on this one. You'll rendezvous on site.
about the pathogen spreading through Mother Base. You've seen everything we've got on the outbreak. What's your opinion? Textbook symptoms. A vocal cord parasite infestation. And judging from this casualty list, it is the Kikongo strain. Meaning, a breed of parasite that triggers symptoms upon detecting pronunciation specific to Kikongo. So our Kikongo-speaking staff are at risk? Quite so. Hmm. He's right. All the victims do speak Kikongo. So they can survive if they just use another language? There is no guarantee you're only dealing with a Kikongo strain. Other language strains may be present. You well know he was teaching them languages from all over the world. The Devil's House. In Zoya Badia Bulu. There is no way to know how many strains he has at his disposal. So how do we keep them from becoming symptomatic? You mentioned using microbes. Use this. A type of Wolbachia, introduced to a sample of the parasite. Wolbachia? A parasitic bacteria that colonizes the parasites, turning male to female and preventing copulation. You must cultivate more. What have you done with the infected bodies? Cremated to stop the spread of infection, but we did keep a few for study. Good. Take this sample, grind it to a pulp, and introduce it to the larvae now nesting in the dead. The Volbachia will multiply rapidly within those larvae. They're soldiers, not some petri dish. Conventional cultivation methods will take too long. Extract the Volbachia from those larvae and vaccinate your men. Kikongo speakers first. This is the fastest, surest way. No one is to speak a word of Kikongo until the Bobakia are safely inside them. I will instruct your medical staff in detail on site. You have the appropriate facilities. Yes, but do not worry. I made a pact with your Bidde on the honor of the Dine. I speak no lies. Keep an eye on him. Will do. Follow me. I'll take you to the medical team. Now, we must wait for the Volbachia to multiply in the larvae. How is the disease transmitted? If it's carried by insects or rodents, then... There is no intermediate host. So... The vocal cord parasites lay their eggs in the larynx of the host. Most hatch and migrate to the lungs but some are transported to the mouth through ciliary movement, mixing in with saliva. Saliva. Droplet transmission. Sneezing, coughing. Any food or water containing infected saliva. It would spread fast. Indeed. And when the larvae migrate to the lungs, symptoms can resemble the early stages of a cold making it easy to infect others. Meaning a simple conversation would be enough to pass it on. All right, so what happens after the larvae migrate to the lungs? It is as I said before. They mature by feeding on alveolar tissue. It is only then that noticeable symptoms appear in the host. And by that point, it's too late. He's infected everyone else. It's one hell of a weapon you've created. That is what Blag Anna wanted. Something that would spread easily. <sighs> In truth, he's not the reason. But we will discuss that another time. The Walbachia have multiplied. We're preparing to extract them and begin vaccinating. But is this really the only way? Sure, it'll prevent infection, but the cost... You would rather remove their vocal cords? No. Tactical communication's a linchpin of what we do. What if we were to ban the use of Kakongo? Insufficient. First, there's no guarantee 
that only the Kikango strain is here. Second, there is the matter of how the parasites lay their eggs. Before they can copulate, they must be exposed to the pronunciation of a specific language for a period of time. Like a container filling with water. But the duration between when the container is full and when the copulation actually begins varies from case to case. In other words, even if the infected stops speaking as a countermeasure, it may already be too late. The only true solution is to prevent copulation through the Obakia, or by physically removing the affected tissue. Yeah. Do any anti-parasitics work? It sounds as though you have already tried. Yeah. We tried every one there is, and nothing. I have yet to find a medicine that can remove the parasites. At best, it temporarily covers their ears. Why is that? Because the parasites are... companions to us. To remove them inevitably harms the host. Companions? More than you think. And this is why the human immune system cannot eliminate them. We've inoculated the staff with Walbachia to keep them from becoming symptomatic. Hmm. That should also contain the infection. How did this happen in the first place? It has to have been a cipher spy within our ranks. If this is so, then why the Kakango strain? If their intent was to wipe you out... Skullface said the remaining English parasite was close to the boss. If this latest strain was his doing, he wouldn't have tipped his hand. It is possible someone brought eggs onto the base without knowing. Stuck to their shoes, clothing. Well, that makes the most sense to me. And where did the eggs come from? You mentioned that your boss visited Nzoya Badiopulu. Sure, but his gears disinfected immediately upon return. Hmm. Then he was not the carrier. And not just the boss. All staff dispatched to high-risk regions were quarantined on the flight back. When the symptoms first appeared, we checked and disinfected all equipment used up to that point. Any and all prisoners, soldiers, materials, and animals extracted during missions were also quarantined. So... that just leaves. I have seen children around here. Where are they from? All over. Some were being held hostage at a mine. Then there were the troublemakers at Buala Yamasa. Buala Yamasa? Yeah. Their clothes, their things. Did you burn them? They're just kids. We couldn't. And besides, not one of them's shown symptoms. The parasites don't infect prepubescent hosts. Their vocal cords are not fully developed. Well, if infection doesn't occur in children, it is possible they carried eggs on their clothes, and the infection spread from them. Check the kid's stuff. I doubt there is any trace left by now. But if there is, some of those kids must be close to hitting puberty. How could we have missed this? The name Bwala Yamasa got quite a reaction from you. I'm guessing the Kakongo strain was released in that village. Cypher used that region to experiment with vocal cord parasite transmission. The Kakongo strain. The settlements around the refinery upstream of Bwala Yamasa were the proving grounds. They would infect one villager and record transmission speed. Dangerous work. If they failed to contain the infection, it would slip into the surrounding regions. At which point the world found out about the parasites, making them useless as a weapon. Incredible they'd risk such a thing. The test site was densely populated too. A terrible place for such experiments. No doubt, they thought burning everything would wipe away all traces. 
the settlements were covered in oil anyway. Who would wonder if one day they caught fire? And so it did. They burned it all, living and dead. Those remains. But they miscalculated. Transmission speed was far faster than anticipated. It may have been the temperature, or hygiene standards, or perhaps the parasites reacted quickly to Kikongo. Whatever the reason, nearly all villages were swiftly infected, and the settlements reduced to mounds of corpses. Making matters worse, the dry season was ending. When it came time to burn the village, the Moneni River had swelled. Many of the bodies were waterlogged. Meaning they didn't burn completely. The corpses still contained viable eggs, and the larvae washed downstream. And when the people downstream drank that water, that marked the end for Bwala Yamasa. I learned all of this at the mansion. I warned him of the risk of eggs getting out. And? We are prepared for any eventuality. I get it. Mm. Putting the oil field back online. The oil leaks, Saner. They planned to pollute the river, prevent the spread of infection. But the oil flow was stopped. At downstream, the people of Masa Village started using the water again. The PF soldiers deployed at the village were locals, spoke Kikongo. They were infected, and the kids survived. I've heard enough. And who stopped the flow of oil? Don't. We did. <sighs> that confirms it. The source of the Kikongo strain infection was Masa Village. And the children brought it here. It is no one's fault. There is no blame to be cast. The parents. In other regions? Their physiology requires that they be tested under varied conditions. Another test site was in Afghanistan. So it was the parasites there. Both the Pashto and Tajik languages are spoken in the mountains of Afghanistan. And population density is low. Ideal testing grounds for how accurately the parasites target only the specified language. It is also relatively easy to prevent the spread of infection. And the results? The first test, I am told, was a success. Once the Pashtun Mujahideen were infected with the Pashto strain, they were all but wiped out. The Hamid fighters is Marseille Fort. It was doubly successful. No Tajik Mujahideen or Soviet soldiers became symptomatic. So the parasites proved to be effective. What about the second test? Also supposedly a success. A Pashtun village was the target. However, the original aim was to obtain samples of the infected. In this, they failed. And the village? The Soviets enacted a standard scorched earth operation. That must have been the village where Malak lived before being held captive at Lamarhate Palace. Having had more time to think on it, the details shared with me may have been false. They are madmen who would do anything to cover up the truth. They certainly seem to like tossing their problems in the fire. As a boy, Skullface's life went up in flames. Perhaps that is what fuels his fixation with fire. Your well bacchia stopped the infection all right, but I still don't get it. How can a few bacteria change males to females? I know they're only bugs, but... It is not such a rare thing in the natural world. Many insects and nematodes are infected with Bulbachia. But why? They nest in the cell cytoplasm of the host, even in the egg cells, with a result that the offspring are born infected. Mother to child transmission. However, Wolbachia cannot nest in sperm because they do not have cytoplasm. 
So even a successful infection of a male ends after a single generation. This means the Volbachia must resort to maximizing the population of infected females. Sounds like an ethnic cleansing campaign on a tiny scale. Gender change from male to female is their survival tactic. So more females means more Waldbachia carriers so it can keep thriving in the following generations. But the parasites in a human host are supposed to be a mating pair. If there's no male, there'll be no offspring at all. It's killing itself. Slow down. This tactic is intended for environments where a single male can copulate with multiple females. Originally, the Wolbachia did not infect the vocal cord parasites. I created a mutated strain, modifying the Wolbachia so that it could infect monogamous pairs. The Wolbachia's greatest multiplying tactic, the male to female change, worked against itself in the monogamous parasites. Just as you said, then I performed repeated selection of Wolbachia strains until I achieved a hundred percent certainty of male to female conversion. Creating female-female pairs, unable to reproduce. And you say the Wolbachia affects the host of the host, that is, us, cutting off our means to reproduce? It is almost certain. Of course, we will not turn female. After all, mammals possess no natural gender-changing function. But some Wolbachia strains can cause cytoplasmic incompatibility in the host. Is that some cell deformity? Put simply, it means the altered sperm of infected males kill the female's egg on contact. And that's happened to us? Yes. And yet, what occurs in humans is not just simple CI. To date, there are no cases of Volbachia affecting humans. Mm. The fact that this strain causes this effect, is it the vocal cord parasite's affinity with humans? Mm. I do not know enough to say for sure. So the parasite warps the host. Reminds me of what Skullface said. It is the way of all organisms to create their own optimal environment. Just look at you and this base. Organisms that cannot do this are doomed to extinction. The difference with parasites is that their environment is another organism. That creates a connection between life and life. Parasitism, symbiosis, or death. In this way, the host too is challenged to adapt. <laughs>